So today's top five is biopics, top five biopics. Not necessarily j about just the one person, but just true stories, bios, stuff like that. It, it's pretty interesting. There's a Richard Pryor uh, biopic coming out that we'll be talking about on another show uh, with the Andre the Giant. It just got me uh, thinking about it. I threw a vote out there. It was 50-50. We did a coin toss, basically, and we picked biopics. <laughs> <laughs> so, Art, since you are the guy on the couch, you go first. Well, first I want to start off with this couch is way too low. <laughs> well, you can't be taller than us. Well, at least let me be a little bit higher. No, 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 no. That's just, just the, the hierarchy of the show. You are beneath us. <laughs> That's not the first time you told me. Exactly. Oh, whoa, wait. All right. What was that about? So number five for me would be Dragon the Bruce Lee story. Yeah. That's a good one. Of course. That, for me, you know, which one of us growing up early the early 80s, mid 80s, did we not want to be Bruce Lee? I oh, mean, absolutely. I still do. Yeah I, yeah, I mean, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh my God, I can't wait to see the internet. <laughs> it was a toss-up between uh, five and four. Okay, four, number four. Number four was Holly. And nice. the reason why is because of all the work that uh, uh, Will Smith put into it. Yes, he really, absolutely. It opened my eye. He really broke the mold of what he was normally doing. Try to stretch himself, and he did such a great job physically. He put himself. In. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Uh, number three was Shinsuke. Uh, okay. Just because of the the uh, how much it moved me watching it, I remember I, I didn't even realize they went through so much. I right. Didn't read about it, but seeing it visually made an impact about it. And uh, it got Steven Spielberg his first Oscar. Very uh, right. nice. Uh, number two, interesting. That was 1980s Elephant Man. Very nice. Oh, there you go. Uh, that mm. movie as a child, watching it, uh, I called up. Uh, maybe I'm a big private fan. I don't know. John, John Hurt was excellent as John Merrick. It was it was amazing. It, it was. I watched that movie and I was like, why doesn't he look like Elephant? Uh, okay. <laughs> I was a kid. I was a kid, damn it. Good. All Number right. one. <laughs> Number one, Braveheart. Very nice. There you Who go. Who doesn't quote Braveheart? It's just like Who does? random, random situations. Uh, <laughs> you just start making up these... Uh, He's Plus, my favorite scene is when he just walks up and he, instead of giving a big old speech, when he's just after he found out his mutant wet, you know, ride, got just like I just thought that was so awesome. Oh yeah, the Mel Gibson was amazing. Uh, Top four okay. before he was alienated from Harvard. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Your turn. Oh, Mel Gibson. Sorry. All right. Uh, my top five. So uh, it's. Look, there's a lot of great biopics, so we're gonna duplicate some of the ones that are on each other's list. And the first one that we're gonna duplicate is, I'm gonna go, my number five is gonna be Ali as well. Uh, like you said, all the things that Will Smith had put himself through to attain, you know, the stature of Bruce Lee, his mannerisms. Um, Ali? Bruce Ali? Bruce I'm sorry, did I say Bruce Lee? <laughs> Ali. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Ali. Dragging the Bruce Lee story was still in my head for some strange reason. But Ali, <laughs> where he was even, when he was, when they were uh, rehearsing scenes, like fight scenes, he was in the ring while uh, Muhammad Ali was out there. He was talking crap to him. He was talking, I'm prettier than you. I'm faster than you. I'm better than you. So I, this is one of those things. And we got to see a darker side to Bruce Lee. Some of the... Uh, Bruce Lee again. Uh, dude. <laughs> to, to Muhammad Ali. Bruce Lee. <laughs> I am so screwing this up. To Muhammad Ali. Muhammad as far as um, as far as with the womanizing and things of that stuff, and it was it was a different light that you got because we always saw him as this this great iconic figure. You never saw some of the the, yeah, the, the gray side. You you also you also um, got a little bit more in detail as far as his political yeah his political views. Too. We knew it going uh, coming through when he changed his name and you know not want to you know go and enlist when he get drafted and things of that sort. But you know they went into more detail. They, they went into more detail with the so Frazier fight. Uh, showing him as a man. Yeah, exactly. Just right. A man. Exactly. Yeah. The thing that I didn't, the, the thing with that was just that uh, I thought, I thought Michael Mann's buildup of the fight and then it just kind of like, it, it just, I don't, I don't think that he really captured because the thing of, uh, they, they should have got yeah. somebody to come in to, to direct the fight. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's it. All right. So my number four, Shredder Compton. <laughs> Excellent. Shredder Compton. And it was, was, was on our last list. list. It was on our, it was on our last list. But damn it, it's a biopic. And it's an awesome biopic. It's amazing. <laughs> it's an awesome biopic. Favorite movie of 2015. I'm not going to beat it to death because we already beat it to death in the last one. But it was a great biopic. And, you know, if you're an NWA fan, you'll love this one. Number three. All right. Number three. 
the social network. What? Okay. You don't like the social network? <laughs> no. I Eisenberg was really he good. He was really he good. Was good. Even JT. Justin Timberlake. JT was even good in it. And Spider-Man. And Lex. And Lex. Everybody was in this movie. <laughs> But it was a great movie. It was. A, it was a definitely. It probably they made him seem much cooler than who he really is. So, uh, but Social Network is a great movie. So moving on, number two, Malcolm X. Very good, Malcolm X. I like it. So I mean, it's a it's a lengthy movie because he had such a, an amazing life. It, his transition, his arc, and his life from you know being basically a criminal at the no, beginning, beginning of his life, you know, becoming, you know, a political figure towards the end and, you know, standing up for equality and, you know, and it's one of those things where when you watch it as a kid, it defines your whole life and how, one, you how you visual, I mean, how you picture him, but how you think about things and how the world is around you. So that's why I, I feel it's a well, great Well, very nice. Right, right. Great pick. And number one, because I love this movie so much, Goodfellas. <laughs> Technically, a ball pit. We, <laughs> Technically, I, I, I think too much alike, Terry. I swear, I was, dang you. And we went to the very edge of what was considered a ball pit. It's technically a ball pit. Technically a ball pit. Very nice. All right. <laughs> By number five, uh, you know what? It's, I'm, I had I had several, but they were on previous lists. I'm trying my best not to duplicate. But I'm gonna go Ed Wood. Okay. Johnny Depp as Ed Wood and with Tim Burton's direction was awesome. And on top of that, uh, Martin Landau. I mean, I didn't like it that he won the Oscar because I thought Gary Sinise should have won it that year for playing Lieutenant Dan. But Martin Landau was awesome as Bella Dosi. Right. And uh, Tim Burton's direction with a great ensemble, your favorite Bill Murray. <laughs> Just amazing. I love it. So should we blame that movie for, uh, for Johnny Depp doing all these weird roles since then? Uh, no, not really, because you know he did Edward Scissorhands before. Uh, okay, I would. So um, number four, Malcolm X also. Right, so I have Malcolm X also. Denzel Washington was just perfect, perfect, perfect in in the role. He gave him um, militant, you know. Absolutely, and it was a walk, walk. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. And not a yeah. not a not, but you know, Spike Lee too. Yeah, yeah. Spike Lee too did pretty good. And the, the guy defining that, move for Spike Lee outside of uh, do the right thing. The yeah. honorable. The, the gentleman that played the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he was excellent. Also, yeah. I mean, you really, you really had you believe that that was him. <laughs> Number three, this is gonna shock you, but Raging Bull. Really? Okay. No, Freaking De Niro playing Jake LaMotta and Pesci next to him, man. Okay. Amazing. Scorsese captured it beautifully, and and uh, he, uh, because he was so method, I think they either they filmed it in reverse or something because of the uh, the the weight that he had to put on, because he actually put on the weight. Mm -hmm. So I think they filmed some scenes first. Very raw film. Right. Yeah, amazing, amazing movie. I thought you were gonna say Rocky for a minute when you, <laughs> you were like, I was, Rocky? Rocky's not choosing. Number <laughs> number two, what <laughs> Raging Bull Rocky? <laughs> Raging Rocky. All right, stay away from Grudge Match. That movie was horrible. All right, number two was well, Goodfellas also. Uh, uh, you you know, know, Henry Hill, you know, telling the story of Henry Hill and the Latanza Heist, and you know, you got uh, technically a Marvel. <laughs> technically a Marvel. <laughs> you know, a lot, there was a lot of truth in there. A lot of elements. You know, yeah. um, uh, Stretching it a little bit. Pesci was, <laughs> Pesci was in top form, got his Oscar for it. You know, so many quotable lines in that. Yeah. It's amazing, amazing bio slash gangster pick. I awesome. think Pesci's whole career was based, based on <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And the number one, which is <laughs> kind of like us you know, doing the same movie thing, music thing, uh, was Ray. Okay, that's a good one. That's Ray good. is absolutely my favorite bio of all time for me. It's Jamie Foxx was just, and I, and I explained it before, I won't get into it, but he was just perfect in the role. I just, right. was perfect. My honorable mention. All right, I can't wait. To, wait, wait. Do your honorable mention. Honorable mention. We always let the guy on the couch go first. Ooh, there are so many. You just give me two. We're coming back to you. Back. All, right. <laughs> all right, my honorable mention was Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, that's a good one. Why is that not on my list? <laughs> my list sucks. <laughs> Man on the Moon. That's another big one. Carrie was just perfect as uh, Andy Kaufman. Schiller's List. All right. And Mask. Rocky Dennis. Oh, I thought you were talking about the cartoon. No. <laughs> Hologram on. Again. Hologram. <laughs> Now on the couch. Rocky Dennis. That was awesome. <laughs> Come back to me. Go again. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, we did a little bit of prep, which we never do, but, you know, we made some good honorable mentions. Damn it. Uh, Abraham Lincoln. 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 You know, I mean, I'm black. You he know, wouldn't I, be I, here. I, 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 was, I was supposed to say <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. Lincoln's supposed to be the first thing on the top of my mind. And, uh, damn it, Jesus. 
Passion of the Christ. Passion of the Christ. Passion of the Christ. It should have been on everybody's list. It should have been on everybody's <laughs> number one. You know what? Passion of the Christ is automatically number one and raised like 1B. <laughs> like 1A, 1A. No, I'm just kidding. He's a higher power. He, he, he's number one in everything. It doesn't matter. But anyway. 300. 300? Technically. Uh, technically. <laughs> Man, we stretch the limits. <laughs> Stretching the limits, but go ahead. This is Very nice. I mean, there was technically 300 soldiers that went up against Persia. They had 300. Is that is that your only honorable mention? Uh, that whole passion of the Christ because shout out Lord and Savior. You know. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, better say something. The Ten Commandments of Moses. Yeah, better say something. I got my I got my risen bracelet, so it's good. So no, we all we all make some pretty good ones. Uh, you know, so you can you can start naming off old, but really, yeah. This was not a bio, but and this is for you, Chris, because you gave me such a hard time about it. Uh, it's softly. Softly semi autobiographical for uh, Janis Joplin, and that's The Rose. Okay, The Rose. So, The Rose. For you, Chris, all right? Now, shut up. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Hi, guys. I'm sitting here with uh, Art Charis. Um, Art is um, actually going to be entering or racing, competing. Racing, competing in the uh, for the Iron Man Foundation. Is that correct? Well, I'll be doing an. I'll be entering in a, into an Ironman race. Race, there you go. Yeah, it's uh, it basically it's 140 miles, 140.6 miles that you uh, you have to traverse basically. Uh, 2.4 mile swim, 112 nice. mile bike ride, followed uh, by a 26.2 mile run, a marathon, a full marathon. Nice. Uh, so, am I going to be on the elite level where I you know place? I really doubt that. I just want to be able to see if I can do it. Mentally push myself. So what made you want to get involved in something like this? Uh, so I'm raising funds for the Iron Man Foundation because uh, six years ago, my mom uh, was diagnosed with cancer, uh, but uh, they didn't have any health insurance. We didn't know how we were going to pay for it. We we're thinking of, you know, I'm a Mexican, right? So we immediately, my parents are like, <laughs> yeah, we immediately start thinking, okay, let's do a fundraiser by selling barbecue plates. Uh, so she was diagnosed October 30th. Three weeks later, she uh, receives a grant out of nowhere. She received a grant, paid for all every, all the medical expenses. Nice, beautiful. Uh, paid everything, uh, so she didn't, she didn't have to worry about anything. My dad was so stressed out, all the blood vessels in his eyes popped. We couldn't sleep. We were all trying to figure out what we were going to do. Uh, and then uh, December fifth, she had her surgery. So it was pretty, it was pretty aggressive. Uh, what they were trying to take care of. She ended up not having cancer. But because of that, my, all my parents' bills were paid. So my mom asked me if she knows I like entering to, into things and just to see if I can do something and accomplish something. So she asked if, I can, uh, if I'm going to be racing and doing anything, let it go for a good cause. Instead of giving somebody you know, a whole bunch of money for nothing, let me raise some. So I'm trying to raise 3500 It is a pretty high goal. Uh, but if somebody can benefit from it as well, and I can bring awareness to various different no local nonprofits, what the Ironman Foundation does is it gives to local nonprofits in that area. So the race is going to be in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, so it'll go to nonprofits in the area. And uh, when exactly is this going to take place? Okay, so the race is November 20th of this year. Uh, a little over six months. Yeah, six months and eight days away. Uh, so there's a build up, training involved, as well as trying to get fundraising and awareness out there. Awesome. Now, all you guys, it's really, really um, appreciated uh, by all of us here at The Goods. If you uh, pay, pay some attention to this, it's a really great cause. Um, are, where can they, uh, what website can they go to to, uh, to uh, sure. make a uh, donation? Crowd Rise. That, it's crowd Rise. Up, you know, Rise. CrowdRise.com. You can search my name, Arthur Rochitis, and uh, you can just click on Donate on one of my race. There will awesome. be a link. Awesome. Well, b before we go, so what exactly is it that you did to prepare for this? So I... Uh, I hope you stopped drinking. Yes. Oh, so, <laughs> so these guys uh, asked me to go hang out, you know, Tuesday night. Uh, Monday night, actually, doing nothing. You know what? I could have, but I'm trying to stay in bed, trying to wake up early. Sometimes I wake up at 3.30, go swim, go to work at 6 in the morning, get out, go train afterwards. Uh, there's a lot of training involved. That's 140 miles that I'm putting myself through. Recently just did 100 miles on my bike. Felt great. Felt awesome. strong. Awesome. Uh, so it's just a lot of training and uh, self-control. 
Well, that's am that's amazing, Art. Either way, it's a great cause, and uh, you know we're all proud of you, and, and uh, we wish you with the, the best of luck. So, that being said, for Terrence, I'm Manny. See you next time.